Why is the water flowing upwards against gravity? Well, here's a clue. Not only is this plane upside down, but it's actually going in a curve. Now you might think just like when you're driving and you take a curve, your friend who is not wearing a seatbelt gets thrown out of the car, centrifugal force. Maybe something similar is happening over here. Maybe there is a centrifugal force acting outwards, which is in this case, upwards. And that centrifugal force is the one that's pushing the water upwards against gravity, right? That's completely wrong. There's no such thing as centrifugal force. That water is actually falling down. And to understand what's going on, Let's go back to our car example. Let's say you and your friend are driving along a circle and suddenly your, the road turned into ice. <laughs> what would happen? Well, the friction for, frictional force between the tires and the road would disappear or almost become zero. Now, would your car be able to take that turn? No, because Newton's first law, things in motion would continue to stay in motion in a straight line until acted upon by a force. Your car would just go straight. But thankfully, the road has not turned into ice. As a result, there is friction, which is allowing you to make that turn. So frictional force is literally pulling your car from that straight line path, making you turn. And again, what if your road turned into ice for the second time? Well, your car would again go in a straight line. But thankfully, it's not turned into ice, so your car can take a turn. It's the friction between the tires and your car, sorry, the road that's making your car turn. And if you look at the direction of the friction, you see that it's always pointing towards the center. So it's the frictional force that's continuously pointing towards the center, making your car turn. And so it's called the centripetal force, center seeking force. But it's not just the car. You and your friend are also going along the car, making that turn. What's enabling you to do that? Well, for one, you've worn seat belts, which is great, safety first. But not just that, there's friction between the seat and your dress. So these frictional forces is again, pushing you towards the center, giving you the necessary centripetal force to move along your car, along with your car and take that turn. But now let's do something interesting. What if somehow we could get rid of the frictional force between the seat and your friend? What if, if we got rid of that seat belt? Then there will be no force acting, there'll be no friction acting on your friend there'll be no centripetal force acting on your friend. What would happen now? Can you predict this? Now your friend will end up going straight while you and your car turns inwards. Do you see what just happened? Your friend did not get pushed outwards. Instead, it was you and your car that started moving inwards away from your friend. That's how he got out of the car. But what do you, the driver, sees from inside the car? Well, you can't see your car moving inwards. Instead, you only see your friend moving outwards. So now I'm gonna show you the exact same animation, but I'm gonna edit it in such a way that your car would appear to be stationary and the rest of the world would appear to move around us, just like what you, the driver, would see. Ready? Here goes. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like your friend got pushed outwards. Again, if you can see their paths, you would see that your friend was always moving in a straight line. There was nothing pushing him outwards. There's only the centripetal force acting on you and your car, making you move inwards. So then why do people talk about this centrifugal force? There's no such thing, we just saw that, right? We'll get back to that, but first, let's go back and see if we can answer our original plane question. If we go back to our plane, something very similar is happening. It's just that gravity makes things slightly more complicated and also more interesting. So let's do it step by step. Let's work on it together. First step, let's assume that your plane was not working. Its wings were not working, engine was not working. It was in complete free fall. What would happen? Well, that plane won't just fall down, it's moving, remember? So because of inertia, it tends to go forward, but gravity tries to pull it down, so it ends up going in a parabolic arc. Everything inside this plane would fall together. It would look somewhat like this. Notice that it wouldn't be able to make that curve. It doesn't get the required centripetal force to go in a circle. It just ends up going in a parabolic arc. But thankfully, your plane is working. As a result of that, there is a lift force acting on your wings. Now generally that lift force is upwards, but now that your plane is upside down, that lift force is acting downwards. 
Now is a good time for you to pause the video and try to think about the rest of the story. In fact, why don't you comment it below? Don't look at any other comments, just write your explanation without thinking about whether it's right or wrong. Now, part of you might be thinking, hey, this is just a trick to get more comments on your videos, right? Well, it's not a trick and true, I would love it if you, I get more comments on my videos, who wouldn't? But more importantly, I've learned this is a powerful way of learning science. You first try to connect the dots yourself and try to come up with an explanation yourself, then the rest of the video will start making much more sense to you. It's a part of active learning. So yeah, please participate if this makes sense to you. Trust me, you're gonna learn much better. All right, let's see. Along with gravity, this additional lift force acting on the plane is gonna make it curve down faster than gravity. And as the plane curves down faster than gravity, the seat will start pushing on the pilot, making him also curve faster than gravity. And as the pilot is holding onto the bottle and the cup, the force gets transferred there as well. And even that cup is gonna start pushing on that water <laughs> to make it curve faster than gravity. But, and here's the important but, what about this piece of water which is inside the bottle? Does it also experience the extra push needed to curve faster than gravity? No, it doesn't because there's nothing on top of it. There's nothing to push it. So putting it all together, that piece of water is only falling due to gravity, but the rest of the plane, pilot, and everything else is falling down, curving down faster than gravity. So what's gonna happen? Well, here goes, boom. The water did not go up. The water was falling due to gravity. It was the plane that curved faster than gravity due to the additional lift force. And as a result, it was the cup that came closer to the water. Let's look at it one more time. I'm gonna get rid of the lift forces so we can see better. Here we go, boom. Beautiful, isn't it? And finally, what would happen if we were to look from the pilot's perspective? Well, he sees the, his whole plane to be stationary and the rest of the world appears to be moving. I'm gonna edit the animation to focus on the plane and keep the plane at rest. And you will see that brings out the illusion that the water is falling up, but it's not. It's not falling up, it's falling down. Your plane is falling down faster, which you can't see. So the lift force combined with gravity gave the necessary centripetal force to your plane and all the other things inside it to go in a curve. But the poor water in the bottle didn't get it. Okay, finally, why do people talk about this center fleeing centrifugal force if it's not there? The short answer is to actually make your lives easier. If you look at the car, there's just so much happening. Your friend is going in a straight line, your car is accelerating away from him. There's just so much motion happening. So calculations become a little bit more difficult, right? That's where we think, hey, let's just jump into the car and just assume our car is at rest. And let's assume the rest of the world is revolving around us. This is just so much easier to make our calculations. Now in this perspective, your friend is accelerating away from you. Even though that's fake, that's not true. For, from, for the sake of calculation, that's just so much easier to think of. And now to account for this acceleration, we invent a new force, the centrifugal force. So from this point of view, we say, the centrifugal force was acting on your friend, pushing him away. Even though it's fake, it's not true, it just makes calculations easier. Also, think about this. There's still friction acting on the car. There's still friction acting on you. That doesn't disappear, right? That's there, that's an actual force. Whether you look at it from the ground perspective or whether you look at it from the car perspective, that is there. Now from the car perspective, we are assuming the car to be at rest. So you are also at rest, the driver, you're also at rest. So then how do you account for that? Because there's friction acting on you. Ah, the centrifugal force acts on you as well, canceling the friction. The centrifugal force acts on the car as well, canceling the frictional force. The centrifugal force is acting on everything over here. And now comes my last question to you. Does this mean that centrifugal force, this fictitious force, is canceling centripetal force? What do you think? The answer is a big no. You see, in this frame of reference, the friction is not a centripetal force because your car is not moving. Our car is at rest. The rest of the world is moving around us. So the friction is no longer centripetal force. So in this frame, there's only the centrifugal force. When you go back to the ground reference frame, 
That's when you see the car going in a circle. That's where you have centripetal force. But in this frame, we've already seen, there is no such thing as a centrifugal force. So just like Superman and Clark Kent, centrifugal and centripetal force never exist together. Similarly, if we go back to the plane, it's just so much easier to assume the plane is at rest and the rest of the world is going around us. In this case, we say, hey, the centrifugal force is the one that's canceling the lift and the gravity. And it's the centrifugal force that's making your water go up. Even though that's not what's really happening, it's just so much easier to do the calculations. In this frame, your plane is at rest, so there is no centripetal force. I think this completely animated video is the most logical explanation on YouTube that you will find for why centripetal acceleration has a V squared by R over it.